Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the second edition of Hoops Doctor. I am your Hoops Doctor, Coach Baby 100 on YouTube. And this week we're going to break down the second week of our power rankings after uh, an incredible first week in the NBA. Uh, i got to say that uh, this lockout was kind of disappointing in a way, but the more I look at it, the more I understand that the NBA, I think, the powers that be really uh, plan this all along. Uh, they plan to shorten the season. Everybody's been saying that the NBA season needs to be shortened, of course, anyway. Uh, and this year, uh, they had a lockout. They were able to get some, some of that money back and shorten the season. And the main thing that they did is they, they, they pricked everyone's interest uh, in the sport. And when they launched this year's NBA, it was at the uh, perfect time. I mean, Christmas break, Christmas holidays, everybody off, everybody clamoring for basketball, and then they dropped it with five big games on Christmas Day. Uh, every game uh, exciting, every game meaningful, and this whole season, this whole first week was, was a dynamic week. I've been watching basketball for a long time. And I gotta say, this is one of the uh, best first weeks ever. I mean, you had some key matchups on Christmas Day, but not just Christmas Day, but every night of the first week, you had some marquee matchups. So uh, the power rankings last week, um, you know, I gave my preseason power rankings based on uh, what I thought was um, gonna happen going into this year. Of course, it's hard to do preseason power rankings because you you haven't seen anybody play. Uh, there were some big moves in the off season. And, um, you know, that was my power rankings. But after that first week, kind of, you know, kind of shook things up a little bit, although most of the teams are still there that were in the power rankings with the exception of a couple. Uh, it was a very exciting week. So we're going to uh, jump right into the power rankings. This team um, is still in the number one slot. They, they Going into the season, you know, I said that Miami was going to be hungry. Uh, they lost the championship uh, on some close games. They could have won. Um, they got the big three together. Y'all know the whole deal. Uh, but this year, I think that they're even hungrier. First of all, Spinostra, the coach, got an extension. Uh, LeBron's coming into the season uh, hungry because people are, are more than ever, they're, they're making him step up to the plate. You know, Before this year, everybody was saying LeBron, you know, he's, he's one of the best of all time. But since he kind of laid an egg in that, that finals, people are saying, well, okay, uh, let's think twice about this, how good he is. So now I think he, he's hungrier. And he's coming into the season more humble and not really talking a lot, you know, not making a big hoopla about everything, just playing ball. And, and the main thing that I see that's making the, this team, Miami and LeBron especially, uh, more uh, of, a, of a better team is, is LeBron is starting his offense on in the half court at the four position on the block and I've been saying this you know for a while now and I, not just me but a lot of people have been saying this but you know if he were to start his offense on the block as a power forward or a point forward whatever you want to call it this team would be unstoppable because there's not a power forward in the league that can that can um, guard LeBron there's not a player really period they can guard him but when he goes out on the perimeter then he makes himself available to be guarded but when he's on the on the block there's nobody can guard him because you don't have a power forward that's, that's quick enough to stay with him uh, you don't have a, a small guy that's able to contest his shot so basically if you put a small guy on him he's just rising up right in front of him and, and shooting over him you put a big guy on him he's going around him if you're doubling he's passing out of the double team so right now he, he's playing as well as he's ever played in the league. Uh, not as exciting, of course, you don't see all the flash. And, you know, of course, on the break, he still can do that. Um, but right now, this team is playing really, really well. And, you know, they got a, a, an energy infusion from a guy named Norris Cole, who nobody really uh, saw this coming. I mean, this guy came from Cleveland State. And he stepped right in with, with confidence, quickness, uh, shot-making ability, defense. 
everything that, that Miami was looking for, and he's really taking taking hold to that point guard position. And he's gonna looks like he's gonna be there, and so they can push Chalmers more at the two guard. Uh, they can do a lot of things with Lawrence Cole. So right now Miami uh, solidified their spot as a number one seed um, going in. The second team uh, could have well been in number one. They're, they're undefeated also. Uh, but they they kind of sneak by in a few of their games, whereas Miami just blown everybody out. Um, and that's um, the Oklahoma City Thunder. You know, like I said, going into the season, I think Oklahoma has a lot to prove, even though they're still young. Uh, there's only a certain amount of uh, time you can you can get away with that. We're young, we're up and coming, uh, and this season is a put up or shut up year for them, I think, because you know they've got good players. Uh, you got Russell Westbrook. You got. Um, Pretty much a uh, put up a shut up year for uh, OKC. Of course, you got uh, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, um, but the man has really uh, made a difference. Or the two players has really made a difference this year. Is uh, of course Kendrick Perkins, who they got last year. Uh, he was injured some of last year, so he didn't play a, uh, the entire year. But this year, he's come back. He's in better shape. He's hungrier, and he's given that inside uh, presence inside that they've been missing. And also, you got a guy named uh, uh, James Harden, who, you know, people knew about him, but last year and the year before, he kind of pricked the surface of what he could do. But this year, he's really, really uh, coming into his own as really one of the better offensive uh, players in the league. The guy can do it all. He can go inside, he can go outside, he's big, he can guard two and a three. Uh, and it's just a uh, you know, a heady, uh, high IQ guy, and you know he's very confident in what he can do. You know, he's not afraid to take the big shot. So James Harden and another guy who I've really been impressed with that Serge Ibaka. This guy, last year and the year before, you know, he's more or less a defensive hustle guy, get rebounds. But this year, he's really become confident in his offensive abilities. I've seen this guy step out and hit the three, which I didn't know he had. Uh, I didn't see that. He, he's, he's able to go inside. He's able to uh, play defense on the best uh, post players and even the three sometimes. Very athletic, long, and he's mean. You know, he's not afraid to, to mix it up with anybody. So uh, OKC has really, really uh, got a good team. They got a good mix of people young. Uh, and Perkins gives them that uh, veteran leadership. Uh, seems like they have a good coach. Uh, Westbrook is playing. You know, they're going to be hard to beat. So they're number two. Uh, number three, uh, I got to go with Chicago Bulls. Um, I wasn't sure how they would do this year because of the fact that, you know, I felt like they still needed some uh, extra pieces. But the ones that the pieces that they got, and of course Noah's uh, healthy this year. Uh, whereas he was injured a lot last year, but the pieces they got, uh, they're really coming together. And, and Derrick Rose, I mean, this guy is awesome. He, he's, you know, there's so many good point guards in the league right now. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, pinpoint one and say this guy is the best, but you got to go with Derrick Rose right now. Of course, he won the MVP last year. He's pretty much just carrying that team. You know, he he he's. He has such a, a strong will to win. That's the thing that, that separates him, I think, from the other point guards, even though you can say that about Rondo also. But uh, Derrick Rose just really, he takes it upon himself to be the leader. Uh, he's not that rah-rah type of guy, but he just plays so hard that he makes you want to play. And, you know, he's run, he's got unlimited amount of energy. And now he's developed that outside shot that, that makes him unguardable, really. So um, Chicago, uh, Lou Al Dang is you know he's been consistent ever since he's been in the league, really. Uh, but they're getting good play out of Boozer. Of course, that's going to be the test, you know, when they get down to the playoffs. Is Boozer going to be there? That's been that's been their um, problem in the last couple of years. Is that Boozer? He, he's kind of disappeared in the playoffs. So. I still think they could use another uh, score. Um, 
to take some of the uh, pressure off of Derrick Rose, but right now they're, they're clicking on all cylinders, so uh, i got to put uh, Chicago in a three spot. Um, in the four spot is a team that uh, really, you know, i got to say I, I was kind of, you know, underestimating them going into the year. A lot of people were picking them to do really well. Uh, but I wasn't quite sure, you know, I guess because I really, really, you know, Denver is one of those teams that you can't really get excited about because they always do it and then they kind of fade out. Uh, but if you look at that roster that they got on that team, uh, Denver is going to be there. Um, you know, they got probably one of the best coaches up there in George Carr. Uh, but you look at that roster of Ty Lawson, who one of the quickest guys in the league, you know, he's coming out of college, he, he did it all at college, and he's bringing that, that leadership and, and winning attitude to Denver, and he, he's pretty much unguardable also. When he's hitting his outside shot, uh, it's, he's hard to guard, you know, and then you got Andre Miller who's uh, bringing that veteran, steady uh, play to the guard. He can play point, he can play two, he can score when he needs to, he can pass when he wants to. He can play defense. Uh, he's really, really added a dimension to that team that um, they didn't have. Then you go with Nene, who's, you know, Nene signed a big contract in the offseason, um, was, was one of the most um, highly sought-after free agents in the market. Denver was able to re-sign them. And I was really surprised, to be honest with you, but they were able to re-sign Nene, and so they have Nene. Al Harrington, uh, we know he can score with the best of them. When he gets hot, uh, he's, he's pretty much unstoppable also because he, he can shoot the ball. Uh, then you got a follow uh, who's a very versatile player, great defender. He can, he can guard the other team's best player. He can also score, uh, run the floor. Uh, then Gallinari, who they picked up from New York last year, and we know he can shoot the ball. So if you, you put all those guys together, you got a pretty formidable team right there, and like I said, I kind of underestimated them a little bit uh, going into the season, but uh, Denver's for real. So you got so far, you got Miami, you got Oklahoma City, you got Chicago, and you got Denver at number four. Uh, number five, um, the L.A. Lakers. Um, I kind of was surprised at how, how well they played without uh, Andrew Bynum in Atlanta, but they were able to hold hold their own. And you know now that he's back, he, he's playing with a vengeance. And that team is going to be there. I, I still don't know if they're going to try to make a move uh, before the trade trade deadline. And kind of right now looking like they might just uh, hold pair with what they got. And uh, if, if Bynum continues to play like he's playing. And the role players that they got uh, continue to uh, come on and play like they're playing. Uh, I think they're going to be there. I mean, they're they're as good as anybody. I mean, right now OKC and, and you know Denver slightly ahead of them. But you know, if I had to pick a team in the playoffs right now, um, you can't discard the Lakers because they've been there uh, and it's a short season and you know they're veterans so uh, they're gonna be right there in the thick of things so the LA Lakers have really uh, surprised me uh, this year so we gotta go with LA at five um, San Antonio is gonna come in at six um, another one of those veterans teams that you know at the beginning of the season everybody's saying they're too old uh, and they may well be you know by the end of the year uh, you never know how this short season is going to play out. Uh, one good thing is that uh, Greg Popovich, you know, he, he won a championship in the last lockout season. But, you know, some people say that's going to hurt or help them. You know, I, of course, that was a long time ago, but the guys he has now are a lot older. Um, but, you know, they have played this year. You know, when they're healthy, which looks like Tony Parker and Ginobili are healthy, those are, those are main two. Uh, right now, they're, they're running their offense um, through those two first. Uh, in the past, they've been going inside to Duncan and then kicking it out to Ginobili. Um, but right now, Ginobili is really their first option. Uh, Tony Parker is, is always is on the break. He tries to get the break first. They lost George Hill, uh, but you know Popovich is always able to find some guy that nobody knows about. You know, and plug in there. DeJuan Blair is playing a really great ball this year, you know, in his role. Um, so, right now, I, I got to go with San Antonio at six. 
Uh, like I said, their their veteran team, you know, their problem, of course, is going to be all these back-to-back -back games and, and shortened season, compacted into into um, a few games and a few nights. How well their bodies are going to hold up? But if they do, they're going to be hard to beat in the playoffs. Um, number seven, uh, the L.A. Clippers. You know, I'm still on the bandwagon, uh, kind of soften my stance, I guess, if you will, you know, uh, only due to the fact that I, I still think they could use a an outside scoring big man to kind of free up the middle a little bit, but they're a very exciting team, and if you look at how many players they got on that team, they're going to be hard to beat. You know, Chauncey Billups uh, has been injured, but, you know, you got Randy Foy, you got Karan Butler, you got CP3, you got Mo Williams, you know, that team is just loaded. You know, if one guy is injured, uh, they got another guy that you can bring in that's just as good. So, uh, Chris Paul looks like he's hungry to win a championship. Uh, we know they're very athletic in Blake Griffin and uh, the center. They're just uh, signing a contract. So, it's just going to be a matter of, of can they do it in the playoffs? I think it's not going. They're not going to have a problem getting into the playoffs for sure. Some people were saying, "Yeah, they're a playoff team at the beginning of the year." But I don't know if they're contenders. I, I think they are contenders because they got they got big shot people on the team. They got a good coach, uh, and they're going to be there. I mean, it's very very difficult to to handle legs like they get. You know, I don't care who you are. You got to run with these guys, and they're going to be there uh, if they stay healthy. So, got Clippers at seven, got Portland coming in at number eight. Uh, this is another team that's um, loaded. I mean, when you look at some of the people they have on their team, uh, they're very deep. Um, they got Gerald Wallace, they got Jamal Crawford, they got um, LaMarcus Aldridge, who's, who's probably one of the better power forwards in the league, inside, outside, uh, great defender, long arms. Uh, can play center if he has to, even uh, the three position. Just a very versatile player. Uh, Wesley Matthews, uh, who you know is really coming into his own, one of the better scorers in the league right now. So uh, Portland has a great coach. They have great fans. Um, that's going to be a team that's going to be there at the end. Um, you're going to have to deal with them. Uh, so Portland's coming in. <coughs> at the number eight spot. Uh, rounding out the top ten, um, Boston. Boston, you know, there's so many veteran teams this year. It seems like every team is, is, is veteran team. You're either veteran or you're very young. You don't have any middle of the road type teams. You know, Boston, we all know they got the big three in Rondo, uh, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, you know, Ray Allen. Um, well, you got the quadro, I guess you would say. Paul Pierce has been injured most of the year, but he's back now. And so we're going to see over these next few games. They played a tough schedule. Uh, one thing about the NBA that I, I'm glad they did is that the, the uh, big-name teams, they made them play tough schedules coming out the bat. Uh, didn't give them no pup, cupcake schedules. So, But now some of those teams are going to get a little bit lighter. Uh, so they'll be able to pick up some games. Uh, Boston's going to make up some games. Uh, as long as they can stay healthy uh, and it looks like they're in shape, uh, they got the better end of the Brandon Bass deal um, by giving up Big Baby. Brandon Bass is tougher than Big Baby. You know, he Big Baby kind of was wimpy, you know, in my opinion. Good player, but, uh, you know, he cried too much and, you know, he was just a high maintenance guy. But Brandon Bass is, is a better of those two. So you got Boston at number nine, then Orlando is, is sitting there at number ten. And you really can't go any higher with them, even though, you know, they play pretty well. They're not going to do any better than they're doing because, uh, you know, they're going to have to do something with the Dwight Howard. I mean, there's no way that they cannot do something. You know, they, they say they're counting on him. Uh, they haven't given up on him resigning, but we all know uh, that he, he doesn't want to be there um, because he, he's got his eyes set on, on some big markets. Uh, I kind of personally think he's going to end up in New Jersey, um, maybe before the trade deadline, or maybe 
on uh, active trade uh, deadline. Now they're talking about you know moving him to a team that maybe uh, want to gamble on him for one year for the rest of the year and you know see if they can win a championship, even knowing they're not going to resign, which would be a good deal. You know, if you're a team that's sitting, sitting there on the fringe like in Atlanta or uh, a Golden State or somebody like that that just need maybe one player to put you up in the top, you know, why not? gamble on him, as long as you don't give up too much, you know, so I'm going with Orlando there at number 10. So uh, Orlando number 10, and we're going to round out uh, the last six playoff spots. Uh, coming in at number 11 is the Indiana Pacers. Uh, this is another team that, um, you know, you kind of never want to get too excited about this team, but, you know, if you look at this roster right now, they got a pretty good roster going for them, and they're really playing well. Uh, they're loaded, really. Um, they got a lot of good players, good coach. Danny Granger, of course, one of the best uh, prolific, more prolific scorers in the league. But you got also a lot of role players, and Tyler Hansborough, who's a guy, you know, I know myself, I kind of uh, underestimated him coming out of college, thinking, well, okay, he's not going to really do too much. But the more I look at him, uh, the more he really, really inspires me to, uh, I like those type of players that day is out there to prove everybody wrong. He's definitely doing that. Dude can uh, rebound the ball. He can score better than I expected. He's a high energy guy. Uh, he just gets it done. You know, he, he won on the college level and he's winning in the pro level. Uh, so Tyler Hansborough, you know, you got they picked up George Hill from uh, San Antonio who's really uh, been a good pickup for them at guard. You know, they were kind of missing that point guard, uh, but now they got George Hill. Paul George, who's in his second year, uh, this guy is really impressive. Uh, 6'8", um, guard forward, uh, guy can score from the inside outside. Reminds you a lot of Scottie Pippen. Uh, long, athletic, uh, great shooter. Uh, Paul George is a good player. Then they, they picked up uh, one of the uh, biggest free agent signers of the, of the offseason in David West. And we know uh, when this guy's healthy, he, he's one of the best low post scores in the league, he's got a good mid-range jumper, uh, very consistent score. So uh, Indiana's going to be there. Uh, they, they, they played really well this year. So number 12, uh, this team, New York Knicks, you know, they really could could go up or down. You know, they, they everybody, you know, the big hoopla coming in this year, you had Stoudemire and uh, Carmelo together for a full season. Uh, then you come, you bring in um, Chandler, uh, who they signed from uh, Dallas, and people were really expecting big things out of this group. Um, but you know they're pretty much still the same, with the exception of they got bigger scores. Uh, they got two guys that you know can score, but they still can't play defense. You know as long as they got Dan Tony there, they're not gonna play defense. You know they brought in Mike Woodson as an assistant to be the so-called defensive coordinator if you can have that in basketball. Uh, but, you know, as long as your head coach is who he is, you know, there's only so much an assistant can do. I mean, as an assistant, I've been an assistant, so I know, uh, you know, you can't, you can't impose your will too much on a team. You know, you, you can help them out, uh, you can give them your expertise, but it's ultimately up to the head coach to do what they want to do. So. Uh, the New York Knicks, they're going to be there. I would hate to definitely play them in the playoffs because, of course, you got Carmelo can get high and carry that team on Stoudemire, too. So, but as long as they're guards, they're, they're hurting at the guard position, especially point guard. Um, you don't have a point guard. Uh, Douglas is a good scorer, but he's not a, he's not a guy that, that's a leader and is going to be able to get the ball to the right people at the right time. Uh, and, you know, Byron Davis is old and broke down, so he's not going to really help him much. He'll help him some, but not, not that much. So the New York Knicks at number 12, 13, Houston uh, Rockets, who have really been one of the surprise teams uh, this season. They got a good coach in Kevin McHale. He's won everywhere he's gone. Even when Miss, with Minnesota, he had that team playing really well with, with not much talent at all. So uh, you put him with Houston and you look at that roster, that roster is pretty loaded. I mean, not any big names, but the guys can play. Um, you know, you got uh, Kyle Lowry, who 
Uh, it's pretty much an unknown, but if you watch this guy's play, he's one of those uh, good point guards again in the league. And on a given night, he, he's kind of unstoppable. He's high energy, athletic, doesn't look very athletic, but very athletic, can score, can play defense. Uh, then you got Kevin Martin, who we know we can score. The guy can score with the best of them uh, from the outside. Um, Samuel Dallenberg, who they picked up in the offseason, uh, really solidified their defense inside. Uh, Louis Scola, who's, you know, just a workhorse inside. Um, smart guy, you know, does the dirty work. <coughs> uh, Jordan Hill, who, who was drafted, you know, I think New York uh, drafted him first, but uh, he, he was a very talented player coming out of college. So, uh, Mikhail's really got those guys playing, so I wouldn't be surprised if they moved up in the rankings because they're going to be consistent. Um, Mikhail's going to teach them the right way, and they're going to play the right way. And, you know, you put talent with that. They got good fan support. Uh, look out for Houston. Rounding out the top 16, uh, Golden State. Uh, you know, many people may say, well, Golden State's not that good, but I think um, with Monte Ellis and Curry healthy, uh, then you got David Lee. That's a, that's a pretty formidable uh, three right there. Um, you know, key is going to be if they're going to be able to pick up another score inside. Um, you know, B. Adrians can't shoot. Uh, Kwame Brown can't shoot. Um, you know, they got good outside wing players, uh, very fast. You know, when they're on that game, you can't stay with them. You can't stop them from scoring when, when they're on. The uh, key is going to be defense, and Mark Jackson really has them playing good team defense. You know, uh, if you watch some of their games, they've really been um, taking it to it on the defensive end. Monte Ellis is really stepping up this year. Uh, this is his year, I think. I mean, uh, this is the year he finally gets uh, to that next level, I believe, and, and becomes an all-star. He's had some off-court uh, troubles, but uh, I think right now he's focused. Uh, that was, a, that was a, one of the best moves that could have happened for him to bring Mark Jackson in there. I think he's going to be a good mentor to him. So look for uh, Golden State. I think still think they may try to make a move to get a big in there. Uh, but they're going to be there, I think. Um, Atlanta. Atlanta's been playing well, but they really haven't played anybody. They played uh, New Jersey twice and another bad team. And so, uh, you know, they're good. They got good talent, but, you know, they just, you can't tell until they play good teams. And, and normally they haven't been playing well against a good team. So uh, they're going to barely make it in this year because the East is getting a little bit better. Um, and then rounding out the playoff teams are New, York, New Orleans Hornets, uh, who have really been playing well. I mean, they you could have moved them up in this uh, power ranking, but, um, you got to still, the jury's out on them, even though they did pick up some good players in that trade. Um, there's a lot of good teams ahead of them, but uh, they're going to be exciting to watch. Uh, they're going to be consistently there, I think, the whole year. So, uh, my power rankings this week, Miami, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Denver, L.A. Lakers, San Antonio, uh, L.A. Clippers, Portland, Boston, Orlando, Indiana, New York, Knicks, Houston, Golden State, Atlanta, and New Orleans. So um, check back with me next week. We'll try to have a, a updated power rankings each week. Thank you.
Thank you.